Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you something really really simple. I'm going to be doing a magnolia bloom using only three colours. So this is going to be great for anyone who's just starting and wants to just try something really simple and that's going to look great. So the colours you're going to need today are brown which is a raw umber, um, a pink which I'm using rose madder hue uh, and a white which I'm using Chinese white. Uh, and I'm using a flat brush today. Um, you can use other brushes, obviously, if you're more comfortable, but that's just what I've decided to use. So you can see I've started with the brown. I'm putting lots of little brown tones into this branch. Um, the good thing about watercolour is that you only need to use one uh, shade to get lots of different tones because you can lighten it up using more water or you can darken it up by using uh, a heavier amount of paint. So more pigment, uh, which you can use to a really nice effect here to uh, get lots of different colours into the branch. Uh, as you can see, I'm working a little bit of white into the branch as well. That's just to give it a little bit of extra shade and dimension. Uh, a few darker tones here as well. Um, it's really nice when the uh, when the paint is still wet on the paper and you've got like a nice watercolour paper, you can... Uh, you can move it about a bit, you can use more water to sort of pull some of the colour out or to uh, add darker lines in without it looking too sort of liney with hard edges. You can really uh, you can really blend that paint in, which is uh, what I'm trying to do here without uh, going over the lines too much. Uh, so here you can see I'm starting to put in a slightly uh, a slightly harder edge on the left hand side with uh, some stronger pigment just to give the illusion of uh, shadow and a, a roundness to the branch uh, imagining that the light is coming from the sort of top right corner uh, uh, so giving the shadows on the left uh, just filling in these little uh, little sprouts little buds here um, I'm making them slightly lighter in colour using uh, a really watered down raw umber again, uh, just filling in a little bit of detail uh, because I think, well, they would be lighter, wouldn't they? You know, on the actual tree. There'd probably be a bit more green in there, but um, we're doing three colours today and uh, green's not one of them. Uh, so you can see here I'm starting to use my pink. This is Rose Madder Hue, which is a really, really nice colour, it's very versatile. Uh, and so I'm just putting that on the tips, on the ends of the little flower buds, just imagining, you know, their little little buds starting to peep through. Uh, because this is spring after all, so uh, it's nice to do uh, something like this. So now that we've finished doing the brown and the buds, we're just going to do a little trick here, which is uh, I'm just going to turn my paper upside down uh, and put it back. Yes, happy with that. <laughs> because uh, what we now need to do is the petals and we're going to use a technique called wet and wet, which is something you do with watercolour. You can see here I'm doing the first petal and I'm using a really watered down, uh, my white, my Chinese white. Uh, just as a base. Um, I don't know how well you can see there but you can really see that it must be very wet because when I put on this really rich and vibrant pink you can see it running, you can see it running right down 
uh, because my um, paper is on a board at an angle of maybe uh, maybe 45 degrees I think roughly um, at a guess uh, but yeah, you can see that that angle is really pulling the paint down because of the natural flow of the water, you know, with gravity. It's sort of giving that natural diffusion, which uh, imitates the sort of natural bloom of colour you would get on the petals uh, in real life. Obviously, uh, it can uh, run a little far sometimes, as you can see there, but the uh, good thing about watercolour is while it's still wet, you can uh, always mop it up with a tissue or a bit of kitchen towel or something, uh, and uh, that will take care of uh, most accidents. <laughs> uh, you can see I'm just starting on this second petal now, again with the white, nice uh, pale wash, nice easy colour to start with. It's nice starting with white because uh, if you make a mistake it doesn't notice. Uh, and then again I'll be going in with the pink, you can actually already see it starting to diffuse over from that other petal which is nice, uh, giving it that sort of a natural pinkish tinge. Uh, and there we go, starting along that left edge there. And you can again see the paint really starting to diffuse in, the colour just running down. And because we've turned the flower upside down, it's actually going the way that we want. You know, if, uh, if I still had this the right way up, then uh, the colour would naturally want to flow the other way, it would flow vertically again. But uh, as you see with magnolia flowers uh, in the real world, their colour sort of starts at the base of the flower and sort of blooms upwards into the petals. So uh, that's the effect we're trying to replicate here. As you can see, I'm uh, doing alternate petals here because I want to give those two some time to dry before I do the rest. Uh, it's nice to have the colour run a little bit, but uh, when you're trying to differentiate lots of different petals but only using uh, two colours, uh, it's very easy for things to become a bit muddled uh, and to become a bit mucky and overworked. And that's the last thing we want here. We want lovely, clean, bright uh, spring colours. We want really fresh. Uh, vibrancy in these pigments so uh, that's a good tip to work with uh, if you're if you want to paint flowers I think uh, always try and do alternate petals to give them time to dry in between and then you can just go back and do the ones that are in between and not have it get muddled or muddy or have the colour run uh, which is something I've had happen to me more times than I care to admit <laughs> Uh, so again, I'm going in with a really, really dark pigment on this edge because it's uh, it's a petal that's folded over on itself. So this is technically the underside that I'm painting now, which is always uh, darker than the top side, generally speaking. So uh, going in and giving that a little bit of extra darkness, which you can see, I think has created a nice, uh, nice contrast with uh, the pale pink. And as you can see by now that my two main petals are dry, so I can go and just do that pretty one in between, just gently putting in a little bit of colour there. So I want this one to be a bit paler, you know, just for a little bit of contrast. Obviously flowers are, some are very uniform, but I think magnolias are not. So uh, trying to really sort of uh, use the same colours, but blend it all out a bit and uh, really give it a really nice gentle pink shade here. Uh, so here you can see I'm going in with uh, a bit more white uh, just to blend it all out a little bit. The good thing about white uh, when you're using it in watercolour, or at least the one that I'm using, which is Chinese white, uh, it has an opacity which is very different from the rest of my pigments. It's a, a slightly opaque colour which is unusual uh, for the watercolours that I usually use so it does uh, it sort of gives a different effect when you use it when you blend it with other pigments it sort of gives it a much more opaque look uh, you can go over pencil a little bit easier um, 
and here you can see that I've just been using it to uh, to just deepen the colour a little bit on these flowers so there's not so much sort of bare paper showing through so it looks like we have actually painted it rather than just leaving it white. And you can see here just going in and filling in these last few petals again with the same techniques just pink and white and blending very carefully putting a little bit of darker color along that edge there just to really define and bring out the shapes and the curve of those petals just just going in and finishing off now just i think just doing our last few touches being careful with that one on the left there that looks like it might be about to run but uh, hopefully not and I think there's just one more to go that's just little yep yeah, just that little one down there it's the last little petal peeping through so that's gonna be on the other side of the flower and so I want that to be quite pale because what that is is an inner petal obviously only seeing a little bit of it but I want it to be nice and pale with just a few sort of veins of paint showing through So now we're, we're pretty much done. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've let it dry for a few minutes. So now I'm turning it back the right way up. And you can see there, very happy with that. That looks a lot better. It looks vibrant. It looks bright. You can see the colour diffusion there. Uh, I'm really, really happy with it, with how this one has come out. Obviously, they're all going to be different because uh, diffusion is a natural process. It's hard to control. But um, yeah, really chuffed with this one. So... Uh, I hope you like it too. I hope this inspires you to uh, have a go and uh, paint one of your own flowers. Uh, please like and subscribe to my channel uh, for more painting, for more art. Um, and yeah, have a lovely rest of the day. Thank you for watching.